Bonjour les amis, or should I say, welcome to The Rendezvous, the number one French podcast hosted weekly by Tim and myself, Alex. The reason why we're here today is to share the beauty of the French culture as well as teaching you French. So, whether you're going to France for vacation or trying to save your grade from your French class, you're at the right place. This podcast will discuss cinema, fashion, music, lifestyle, and many more topics. What's up, you beautiful people? First of all, thank you so much for spending your precious time with us. We really appreciate it. I uh, just want to give you a little background about us uh, so you can understand why you should listen to us and take our advice on how to learn the French culture and the French language. Alex and I have been uh, born and raised in Paris for 17 years. Alex has been here for five years in the U.S. I've been here for six years. Um, so the reason I'm saying this is because we understand the French culture from living in a different culture and from living in a different country. So we can cater to you guys. We can cater to non-French people how to see and how to view and how to learn the French language and the French culture. But first of all, Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so uh, I am born and raised uh, in Paris. Okay, I grew up in the 17th arrondissement, not too far from the Champs-Élysées. I decided to leave France in, like you said, 2018 to uh, play college soccer in the United States. Fun fact is that I ended up going uh, to school in Ohio, in Canton, Ohio, not too far from Cleveland. Uh, and then I transferred to another school in uh, Wisconsin, in Kenosha, again, not too far from Milwaukee. Uh, and I'm about to uh, graduate uh, with an international uh, business and marketing degree. What about you, Tim? Tell us a little bit more about you. I'm lying when I say I'm from Paris. <laughs> Whoa, why is that? Why is that? So I'm just from the countryside. So it's like, it's a little bit outside. It's like 20, 30 minutes outside of Paris. Um, beautiful town. It's called Gif-sur-Yvette, um, next to Orsay. And I went to, uh, the lycée was at Antony, where the Orly airport is. Um, so yeah, just, it was amazing. Just beautiful culture, beautiful people. Then I moved to the U.S. actually six years ago now because I went to become a helicopter pilot. Um, and it was easier to be a pilot here in the U.S. than in France because in France you have to go through the army. And the army was just not my thing. Um, and I became a photographer as well to finance the helicopter. So that's pretty much where we are now. And wow. uh, now we're teaching you uh, the, the French culture because, because that's what we love and that's who we are. Um, this episode focuses on everything you need to know before going to France. Um, that includes uh, the cultural differences, that includes the language, that includes um, food and drinks and how going out is different. Um, and stick to the end because at the end we're going to teach you sentences that you need to know before going to France to like help you out with um, introducing yourself and ordering stuff. Uh, but before learning sentences... Why don't we learn one word? One word. Only one word. Yeah. Do you have a word for us? I do have a word for you guys. Uh, the word that we're going to learn today is honestly one of the most challenging words. It's the word brasserie. Okay. The literal translation of the word brasserie is brewery. Brewery. <laughs> so hard to say. Can't even say that word in English. <laughs> But the actual meaning of the word brasserie is a local French restaurant. Okay, so if you're trying to go to a restaurant and not try to spend too much money, brasserie are usually the best place to go. I miss the food. I miss the food there. <sighs> Man, I do. I do a lot too. <laughs> anyway, so let's, let's get into more like cultural tips uh, that we can give you when you're going to France. But first thing first, okay, I'm going to talk and address uh, this to my fellow American friends. When you go to France, please do not be too loud. Okay, we can hear you, we understand you. We're not deaf. We're not deaf, okay? So when you're introducing yourself to someone, don't be like, whoa, it's so nice to see you, I'm so happy to be here. Like, we're chilling, okay? Uh, especially because you saw a lot of enthusiasts and kind of like an overacting uh, thing that French people don't really like because when you meet someone, You don't know the person. You don't know if the person is a killer or, you know, like a scam. You have no idea who that well, you person is. You haven't met me. So, like, how can you be so happy to, to, like, be with me if you don't know who I am? Like, I might not be your vibe at all. Exactly. So, the fact that you can sometimes be a little too enthusiastic can show a little fakeness. A fakeness. Sorry. And that's the reason why French people don't really like this. So, you can smile. You can be happy. But just don't overact. And that is the reason why that a lot of people think that the French are mean because they can look very close and like cold when they talk to you at first. But believe me, French are not mean. We're just very honest 
and very straightforward yeah. when it's about telling the truth with people. So if you're too loud or do something wrong, yeah, we're gonna tell you. You, you'll know. <laughs> you'll, you'll definitely, <laughs> you'll definitely be, know. You'll be able to tell. But this is a good thing. If you're meeting a French person who look mean to you, it's because they care about you and they actually want to build a relationship with you. Like, I don't know any French person who will be mean just for free like this. Some of them are, but most of them are not. Um, well, the only thing, the only thing, the only thing I know <laughs> is that uh, French are jealous. Yeah, that's, that's the... the <laughs> to me, the biggest difference um, is like here, you can kind of get accustomed to the, the difference in, in, in honesty, but the biggest difference to me is that French are jealous and like Americans are not. You fun, have a good story about fun that. Fun story about, yeah, fun story about myself is uh, after I blew up on social media, I came back to France and a lot of people just keep telling me like, oh, he's just a stupid influencer. You're just so lucky. You're just so lucky. You don't deserve what you have. You're probably making more money than a lot of people. Uh, and that's, 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 not, that's not okay. That's, you, it's not okay making money just by making 60 second videos. But then on the other hand, when I went back to the United States, a lot of people kept telling me, wow, that's amazing what you do. Like, I want to learn from you. Like, how did you get to die po that point? And I really was an example, like this figure of an example and people wanted to be like me. While in France, I was more like the person to avoid and this, this jealousy that I really didn't like. You know yeah, what I that's mean? pretty crazy. It's <coughs> like, we all, I think we all have this, uh, this experience, like even in my photography career, um, I, like I don't have a big following or anything, but like I've worked with a couple of big brands <laughs> and in France, like all of the French photographers that follow me, they're like, oh, you use presets or like, oh, you got so lucky. Like, oh, I'm like, no, like that. You have no idea how much work goes into getting where you are. Yeah. But then you have the American people that DM me all the time. They're like, bro, how did you do that? Like, how did you edit this? Like, I love this. Or like, what kind of uh, software do you use? I really want to learn. Like, do you have any tips? I'm like, Americans want to learn from you. French people will try to turn you down. Exactly. And that's the biggest thing. So like that going back to the original point, there are people are going to uh, try to turn you down, but just don't don't care about yeah. that. Like to, that's that's normal. To summarize this, the first thing, personal. yeah. Try to avoid any like money topics or like Absolutely. Don't tell a French person at first, like, oh, like I'm, I'm very successful. Like, don't obviously try to brag when you're meeting a French person. That is my point. And if you want to do it, do it, but then that won't be the best experience of your life. Because if you do that, they're not going to say hi to you. They're not going to do la bise to you, you know? Oh, yeah. They're not going to do la bise to you. Speaking about la bise, how to greet to with a French person. So when you're meeting a French person for the first time, there's a big chance that they're kissing you on the cheeks. We don't hug. We don't wave at people. We kiss on the cheek. And the fun fact is we don't even like kiss. We make Just this like sound with like our our lips yeah you, should, should we show them yeah all right let's let's show them let's show them how do you do it so you just do this you know you do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as you can see i did not do like mm -hmm. i did not kiss him on the cheeks because you know like it's not very like the most clean thing it, to do it's not like mouth <laughs> to cheeks it's like cheek to cheek and like it might i get it like it might be very scary like at the beginning where like someone gets really close to yeah. you like, you're like, whoa, 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 what's coming? You have Alex's face like towards you. Like, my <laughs> big nose literally coming into your face. But but no, like that's normal. Actually hugging in France, people are going to think that that's weird. Yeah, it's very intimate to hug a French person. Like do not try to hug someone when you go to France because it's a little too private. And to come back on the kiss part, sometimes you also have French people that will do the bees but won't make the noise with their lips. That's just weird. It is weird, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that they don't like you. It's just because they're lazy to make the noise. So they just do. There's so many fun facts and so many interesting things about like the friends. People are going like, to get lost. Yeah. yeah. The buildings. I remember the first time when I was in the United States, the bottom of a building, they call this the floor one. When you go to France, we have a different name for the bottom Floor, yeah. it's called the RC, the Ré de Chaussée, aka also the floor zero. So if you're trying to go to the second floor in France, you have to go to the first floor. Be careful of that. Yeah. So like if, if you don't do that, if you don't do the math, if you don't think about it, you're going to end up 
like knocking on someone's door and you're gonna have a grandma smoking with her five cats. Imagine and you're like, what is this? <laughs> you're gonna knock on the wrong neighbor and see someone smoking this cigarette. Like John, I haven't seen you for so long, but damn, you changed, <laughs> dude, for real. And the cigarette, man, it's we're literally the cigarette culture. Every single person that I know smoke cigarette, and it's very interesting because you're gonna go to France and your clothes and. Everything, Everything's gonna smell like cigarettes. It's, it's crazy. gonna smell like Even cigarettes. Even if you don't smoke. Yeah. Every place you go, so like coffee, restaurants, bars, clubs, everybody smokes around you, so you are going to smell like cigarette. And sp speaking about smoking cigarettes, you know who always smoke in front of me and gets mad at me for smelling cigarette? Who? My mom. <laughs> I would literally like would literally spend the whole day at home. My mom literally like smoke a pack of cigarette every day. Yeah. I fought my whole life to make her stop, but Still can't do anything Dude, about so it. So did I. It's so funny. And she would get mad at me for smelling cigarette. I'm like, Mom, you're smoking <laughs> a pack of cigarette in the apartment during COVID. I so smell cigarette because of you. Yeah, I <laughs> smell cigarette because of you. So don't get mad at me. And yeah. she's always asking me silly stuff. And she's like, can you run some errands for me? I love the uh, running errands. This yeah. expression, I love it. She's like, can you go to the store to pick, you up, so, to pick me up some vegetables and like, like, Fruits and whatever. And I'm like, mom, it's Sunday. Everything is closed on Sunday. Only Chick-fil-A lovers are going <laughs> to understand the pain. It's kind of like, it's exactly the same as Chick-fil-A, where like you only want Chick-fil-A on Sundays when they're closed. And like in France, you only want to run errands on Sundays when everything is closed. And you're like, then what do I do? But it's it, it, it just crazy. And I like this because it also helps workers to have a day off. Yeah. Here in the US, no people know how to grind. They're gonna, you can go to Walmart on Sunday night at 2 a.m. and do your groceries. Like after 10 p.m., not even 10, probably 9 p.m., every grocery store, so Carrefour, Franprix, Leclerc, are closed. Oh, they close so early. Yeah. Okay. And speaking about like, stores, we absolutely need to tell you one thing. The first thing you need to buy is a hair dryer. Yeah. Because if you plug an American air dryer to a French outlet, it's gonna turn into a flamethrower. You're gonna burn. You're gonna burn the Airbnb or the hotel you're staying in. So first thing you have to buy is a hair dryer. So if you don't understand what we're talking about, we have different electrical grids in France and in America, and it's gonna blow up. I get. Don't ask me how I know. It's gonna blow up. <laughs> yeah. Well, and well, it, it's okay for phone and computers. So if yeah. you try to charge your phone on your computer, phones and computers are fine. That is okay. And trust me, you have to. You do have to charge your, your phone because before going out. You have to charge your phone because going out in France is an adventure. It's, it's a journey. That's a quest. It really is. It's so like everything is just <coughs> takes everything is later and like we just party for way longer. Like you go to the club in the US, you show up at like they don't even go to clubs. They go to bars here. Yeah, I guess. But like even when you do go to a club, like you stay an hour and a half, two hours, you're like, what the f And then you go home at and two. It, yeah. And it, then in, in France, like you start at one or two and then you go until six and you're like yeah, so like a, a a normal night out in France usually start around 10.30 p.m., 11 p.m. For dinner. Yeah, for dinner. <laughs> dinner, a.k.a. pregame. You drink a little, you know, a little one with your friend, and then you decide to go out around 1 a.m. Because clubs open around like, like 12.31. Um, but you don't want to show up then. And yeah, and then you're going to party the whole night. So when you, did, when you dedicate yourself going to a club, you're probably going to live around 6 a.m. sunrise. The rule of a good party is that you end when the sun rises and you have one of these. You have a croissant. <laughs> and you go to the breakfast. And you go to the boulangerie, get your yep. croissant, go when to it bed, opens. and wake up the next day at like 3 p.m. Technically the, the same day. About clubs, one thing that I want to tell you is that you cannot show up like you're going to like a college bar or like your random local bar. No job, no like no su no sweatpants, no like, you know. No jogs, no joggings. How you sweat like sweatpants? Yeah, sweatpants. Yeah. yeah. No hoodies. Like you have to be dressed properly. People are good, uh, people are gonna judge you mad if you show up like that. Do you haven't seen the French people looking at you when you're dressing <laughs> like bad. They're like this. You know. Yeah, it's exactly the face. Look. Like who is this guy? And they, you know, they have like an eyebrow separation. They're like I can't yeah, like like uh, like you haven't seen that in the US. You know, like, uh, <laughs> so you really do have to be careful what you're wearing. I would say like a, a little white shirt, you know, skinny jean. I don't know if you can see, but I always wear skinny jeans. I love jeans. skinny jeans. I love, and it's very, very, very French. And do not wear a beret if you're going out. <laughs> do not make that mistake. Please don't do that. And one thing that I love about French clubs 
is the dance part. I love dancing. Show me some moves. You want some moves? What's your, what's your favorite move? Uh, I got you a good move right here. So okay. This one Let's see. Is, is, is my the, 80s. Did you do the my robot? 80s. My 80s move. So I do this one, you know, a little, <laughs> a little like that. Uh, if I'm being a little lazy, you know, I'm, I'm pulling out that one. Okay, you know? that's that's good. So you go to disco clubs, huh? I do, I do. I okay. love disco music. Eighties, nineties, you know, that's, that's my thing. Technically, that's this one is a little too hard for me. That's but like two thousand twelve. My Americanized self come back, and when I feel like I'm a you little, just move uh, your head. I'm a little bourré. Okay, <laughs> uh, I pull up that one. You know, this one. You just jump. I kind of feel really cool when I do this one. <laughs> and every European dance like this. So you have like little like three hundred people just like this, you know, and then moving their head. You know? They just want to move, you know. We just try to burn off these these croissants that we had in the morning. These croissants, these frogs, these snails that we're eating all day. Yeah, wow. we're just trying to burn them off. Like that's the reason we go out for so long is because we eat so much more. Don't be surprised if while you're dancing, a French person came, especially a French boy, and try to dance with you. The reason why is because of we're us. just so much slurrier. As French boys. We know that our accent work a lot on foreigners. <laughs> we know that you guys fantasize the French accent, and if I speak like this, you're going to think it's very cute. What are you talking about? I don't know what you... No. no. Never. I never did that. But uh, even in the UK, like everywhere, the French accent is fantasized. Um, so that's why be ready for French boys to be flirty with you. But that's okay, though. Like, they, it's not predatorial. No, like, it's... it's it, they're actually trying to get to know you. Like, there's no one-night stand. Like, the one-night stand culture is not a thing. The girls. French girls. Have you ever Especially. have you ever hooked up with a French girl? Not a one night stand. I, ever. I, I have never. They play hard to get. So it's just a good thing. It's kinda hot. I, I love that. It actually turned when, Ameri- when an American girls do that, I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, like you're you're special. Like, yeah. You're special. But French girls, the fun fact is that they're very attracted to your mind. Like who you yeah. are. Like what, it's if you, way less about the physique and way more about like who you are as a person. How open you are, how open-minded you are, yeah. Exactly. And, and if you connect on some levels, like if you have some hobbies, like if you have similar hobbies, like the beautiful thing is like to go to a club. Like this summer, I went to a club with some friends. We went to the club and I disappeared for two and a half hours. I literally thought we left for 20 minutes. And I pull up my phone after like two and a half, three hours and like my phone was blowing up. My friends were like, where are you? Like, did you get kidnapped? Like, what happened? I'm just like, no, I was just by the water talking to Talking yeah. to that girl. French girls it are was very, amazing. very, very intense. Very, very We're intense. just like, I feel like it's the vibe of the city too. It's not just like the girl itself. Like there's there's a vibe about the city that like everything, because everything is like cultural and historical, like you want to connect on a deeper level than physical level. I, I, I completely agree Like with it's you. a vibe around that's, everything. That's one of the things that, that I, I miss, I, the I most, miss about honestly. my country and about friends. Uh, one last thing that I was thinking about when I think about going clubbing or going out is drinking okay uh disclaimer we're we're both over 21 okay please don't take this video down we can't talk about uh (laughs) alcohol in general uh drink classy drink with moderation yeah drink classy when you go to friends enjoy the fact that we have good wine good champagne yeah try some little Vin Rouge, red ripe from Saint Emilion, or some little. Should bring a bottle next time. Don Perignon. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> uh, and we don't chug. Please, please, if you this type of frat guy or just guy in general who's gonna open his cane and drink like this or whatever you do, don't do this. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like sometimes it's fun, but like it's not the vibe in France. But no, at nobody all. do that. Nobody does that. I don't think I've ever. D- once I try to do a chugging contest with my friends, like after three or four years in the U.S., and they're like, "Like last, who are you?" I went back to friends and I was I was telling my friends like, "Oh, let's chug, okay?" And they're like, "Chug? <laughs> Why would I chug? Why would I not have fun and enjoy drinking?" You're so uh, in French of you, uh, what are you doing? No, no, Did no. You became so Americanized. Drink? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, no, just just drink and have fun, enjoy the moment. Just don't. Don't, don't bring your, don't get your wine glass like like this. Yeah. Like hold it by the little, you know, like there's the little like tige or whatever. Yeah. And just hold it there and like just just drink drink and the little the little pinky right there. Oh, if know? if you have the pinky, you're fully French. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And do not add ice in your oh, red wine. Please. I saw people That's doing this, and it actually got me very very mad. I get mad every time they do that. Yeah. Drinks, drinks, and there is no only alcohol in France. We do have like <laughs> we do have we do have soft. We drinks. do have water too. <laughs> we do have soft drink, and the fun fact about soft drink is that don't expect walking into a French restaurant, a fast food, and expect to have refill. The French government said 
refill is not going to happen. We don't want our kit to get bigger. So we're going to try to be careful on the consum like consumption yeah. of uh, soft drinks. So like all like, you know, Sweden drinks. I'm not going to. So French people are jealous, but they're also very greedy. Like they're going to put like an RFID yeah. under your cup. Yeah. And there's the for all the self serve um, machines, yeah. it's gonna know if you've already used it or not. Yeah. So it's impossible even for self serve. Like if you go to Five Guys in Paris, you know the one near I do. Opera. Yeah. You cannot refill at all. Impossible. And I try to like take that thing off. We we get very Fre resourceful. French people know how to make money. We they, yeah. <laughs> they know that if you want a second drink, money just gotta pay for it. But the drinks, uh, <laughs> medium <laughs> drinks in the United States is the size of our large drink in France. That's insane. And it's the same for the proportion of food. A large fries in France is a medium fries in the United yeah. States. And when you go to a restaurant, so let, let's go back to like, you know, fancy restaurant and all that. You're gonna see the menu, la carte, and you're probably gonna see like $20 uh, filet mignon with fries. Do, do not expect the quantity of food to be big. The filet mignon is going to be that size. Yes, but you know what the good thing is, though? You don't have tax that are added. You don't have to tip the waiters. Like, everything is included. So, like, that's the bigger thing. And when you go to France, don't tip the waitress or the waiters because that's just not what we do. Like, if on the menu it says 15 bucks for a filet mignon, you put a 15 bucks, like, you put 15 bucks down, you can leave. Like, well, it's not a guessing game. It's not like, oh, it's 15 bucks, I guess. I'm going to pay 15 like 20. 20 percent. Yeah, it's like, what is it? In here, you don't even want to tip the waiter in France. No, you don't tip the waiters. he knows that at the end of the day, he's going to get paid. So if he's bringing you your water 30 minutes later, or if he's bringing you your ketchup or whatever, 20 minutes later, doesn't matter for him. He's going to get this, his money. He's not expecting you to tip him. So that is the reason... That is the reason why French waiters are a little, little different than the enthusiastic American waiters that we know. Yeah. I love, and I actually love them. F speaking, um, I forget to mention this uh, about uh, the fast food. French McDo, last point, way healthier. It's almost like, you're, if you're on a diet and you want to go to French McDonald's, McDonald's, yeah. feel free. You're going to hate me, but like, the first thing I do every time I go back to France is buy a croissant at the airport, I take the train back to Paris and I get a Mac wrap. So they have like wraps, like chicken wraps yeah. in, at McDonald's. They're like the most delicious thing Speaking ever. Speaking about Mac wrap, uh, wrap, Mac wrap. <laughs> have you ever tried Mac baguette? A baguette. I don't think I have actually. With steak in it. It's literally- At McDonald's? The best thing what? that McDonald's have ever created. Okay, the wow. Mac baguette, it's a limited edition only in the summer. Okay. Like, like you can see a picture right now. You can see it's, it's it, wow. Don't get me started. I'm, I'm starving. I'm hungry now. It's, oh I've been eyeing these, these viennoiseries for a little bit. Yeah, now. this is, uh, this is making me really want to, want to eat. My biggest advice to uh, people before they go to France is try to learn a little bit of French or at least like practice with the native speakers a month or two before visiting or before studying abroad, okay? Because this will help you have a better experience. French people understand how hard it is for foreigners to speak our language. And we have so much respect if you're trying. Yeah. I know one platform, okay? It's an online learning school called Lingoda that offers 24 hour seven French classes with qualified native speakers. Okay, and what I like about this platform is that first, they have a sprint challenge that gives you the possibility to get your money back if you're dedicated, motivated, and that you show up to every classes, okay? So you're saying you can learn French for free? You can learn French for free if you're dedicated. What? And wait, I have a better thing for you. If you're using the code FRENCH20 and go on the link in the description of this video, you can give it a try and let me know what you think. I promise you, I had friends using it before going to France, and they told me that practicing with Nazi speakers literally changed their experience. I think the best thing with that is because you actually talk to a human being that is from there, um, is that you're going to learn the French that you need to know, not the French that you should know. So you're going to learn some slang, you're going to learn some, um, some, some sentences that... 
a dictionary is not going to teach you or like a French teacher is not going to teach you because like they, they want to teach you the grammatically correct French. But that's yeah. not where we speak. So like a lot of people learn the grammatically correct French and then they go to France and they're like, wait, it that is, doesn't sound like the same language. It is so different. Spoken French compared to written French Very is different. literally a different world. For example, instead of saying je suis, so I am, people say je suis. Okay, yeah. or I go instead of saying je vais, they say je vais. So be ready for French people to use a lot of argot, a lot of slang. Yep. Okay, and if you're speaking pretty well, if you're fluent in French, they're gonna talk super fast. Yeah. And it is the biggest compliment you can have from a French person if they're speaking fast to you. Yeah, because they assume that you're fluent. They they assume that you're French. Um, but even if it's intimidating, like when they start speaking fast, it's really intimidating. Just don't be shy. Don't be shy. And ask them to speak French to you. Because yeah. I know myself and I do this too. Sometimes I want to be helpful and I want to speak English when I feel that someone is struggling with the French language. But you're not helping them. We're not helping by doing this. So right. if a French person switch to English because they feel like you're not able to speak French, tell them. Be like, hey, I'm trying to practice. Je say de m'entraîner, and they will understand and they will try to speak French with you, okay? Uh, I think it's a right time now for us to help them with yeah. those. How about we actually try to teach them a little French? So we, well, you want us to be some teachers for today? Yeah, we'll, we'll do some French one-on-one -on -one time. French one-on-one -on -one time. Everything you need to know, so expression and words before going to France for the first time. French one -on one one thing. We'll start with the easy part. We start with the easy part. Two things. When you're saying hi at night and during the day, it's different. It's different. How do you say hi during the day? Bonjour. Bonjour. How oh, about that night? Sexy. <laughs> How about night? At night, it's bonsoir. Bonsoir. The thing that I always struggle with is like, when do you like do the difference? Is it like at 5 p.m. or like 5.15? I would say like when the sun's down. Yeah. When the sun's down, it's when you're starting. When it's dark outside, that's when you say bonsoir. So bonjour is just like good day. So you're saying good day, bonjour. And if it's bonsoir, it's good evening. It's funny. It's good evening, yeah. yeah. You know? But we don't really use that. We don't. We don't uh, in, in English, I mean. We I, use that a lot in French. But like in English, that's, you know. That is true. Another one that is uh, still very uh, basic is to say thanks a lot or just thank you. Yeah. How would you say thank you? Merci. And then if you're really thankful, you can say merci beaucoup. Yeah, it's thank you very much. Dude, I have a story about the word beaucoup. An American person came to you me say beaucoup? And, and said beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> so the, the, if you said beaucoup to a French person, it means nice ass. So if you're saying like, oh, thanks, nice ass. Yeah. That is a little <laughs> awkward. So just say beaucoup, not beaucoup. Okay. The amount of time I did that, just like it's, it just came out for some reason, and then people are like, <laughs> "Why are you looking at my ass?" I'm like, "I'm sorry." Oh, like, like I'm, I, I'm sure you have a nice ass, but you don't need to tell a French person they did. You have a, a nice. They ass. They know it. They know it. Uh, I also one thing uh, when you're in France is it's such a big country, and especially if you go to Paris, that sometimes you might lose yourself. You might get you somewhere. Might get lost. That, yeah, you, you okay. might get lost. And to ask for direction, you can kind of do like a French English thing, starting by where is. Yeah. So, où est? Okay, où yeah. est? And let's say you're looking for the Eiffel Tower. So here, we're not even expecting you to ask the whole question in, in English, in French, sorry. As long as you do the first part in, in, in French, you're, you're golden. As long as you're trying. That's exactly where we, uh, well, that's, like, that's what we're looking for. People trying. We talked earlier about restaurants. Um, how do you say, can I have the bill, please? L'addition, s'il vous plaît. Well, wow. well I'll, I'll do that slowly. L'addition, which means the check. L'addition. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Please. And then when you get it, you say merci beaucoup. Oh. Ah, uh, see, and we're, then, and then we're getting a little advanced We're literally here. teaching you how to have a, a fluent conversation uh, in French. Let's do uh, two more. Okay. Two French expression that I want you to use if you're going to France because people are going to be like, whoa. Yeah, that if, person's rocking. If, if you know these two, people are going to think you're fluent. First one is, like, I love it. I like it. Je kiffe. Okay. Je kiffe. Je kiffe. If you ever say that to a French person, man, it's gold. They're going like to they're gonna look at you and they're going to be like... They'll be like, oh, you, so you, you've been faking this whole time that you were American? <laughs> yeah. Last word is perfect. 
oh, that's perfect. Like, wow. No. You can say parfait, which is, you can, you can, you can say, difference, you can, but if you want to be cool, you say nickel. Nickel or impec. Nickel or impec. My dad says that all the time. I'm like, dude, like, stop now. Like, stop saying nickel yeah. every single time. Ah, nickel, ouais. And be careful of not I saying just nickel, nick, because nick has a different meaning. Okay. Yeah, don't forget the L at the end. Just don't forget the L. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it later. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nickel. 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 It's kind of like, you know that metal called nickel? Like, it's literally spelled the exact same way with a French accent. It's Michael nickel. with an L. Nickel. No, that's With an right. N. <laughs> <laughs> forget that. <laughs> Terrible French teacher. Forget that. <laughs> well, please remember those words, okay? Yeah. Um, if you have any questions about everything or if there's any words that you want to learn, um, just shoot us a DM on Instagram, Rendezvous Officiel. It's spelled the French way with an E, not an A. Um, leave a comment down below um, or, yeah, just let us know what you want to learn and we'll be really happy to uh, to try to accommodate that. Yeah, today was everything you need to know uh, about uh, about France. It's but like a crash course before you go to France. Yeah, yeah, but there's obviously a lot of things that we haven't talked about. So feel free to, like Tim said, Comment uh, down below. We'll get back to you uh, or sending us DM. We really want to be uh, here for you. We want to help you. We want to help you experience. And that is the reason why we created the podcast Rendezvous. We have so many more things to come. So many more amazing guests. And I just want to say thank you so much for uh, watching this first episode. Tim, thank you. One last word for today. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Bonne journée and uh, à bientôt. À bientôt. Au revoir. Allez, ciao, bisous. ciao.